It's a Tuesday, February 1st, and the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. A proposal has been put forward for the hosting of Kadumint Day festivities. President of the Barbados Association of Masqueraders, Anthony Lane, tells Barbados today three options have been presented to the National Cultural Foundation for the festival. Among them, the hosting of an exclusive safe zone jump up on the ABC Highway and or at an enclosed venue like the Bushy Park Raceway. But stakeholders are warning that time is quickly running out for a final decision to be made on the festival. We warn that, look, most likely they can get work is if you have it in an enclosed environment where everybody will have to be tested to enter, right? But as it is today, that's, that's how it's looking, but, but we are just waiting to see or to hear what, what is the word because time is short now, but this is now going into February. Um, so basically, we're just waiting to see how things will go or what is the word from the NCF or, or, or government through the NCF or whatever it is. Okay. We're just waiting to hear what's, what's going to happen. Right. Because we need to know, we need to know like, like now, right? Because it's kind of late, but we can still make something. If we were given to go ahead now, we can still get something done for August, for the first month in August, but we won't want it to run or to have to wait to, to die in March or April, April then to, to get a, a go ahead of whether, you know, it will happen or not. The stakeholders contend that the hosting of recent events in the country, such as election campaign meetings and cricket, could provide us some insight on the way forward. You know, looking at what has transpired over the last three to four weeks, uh, I think that can happen. You know, it was still kind of be safe. It was still kind of be safe, uh, taking all the protocols in the, into account. You can still, you know, have the protocols in place. You, you're sanitized. You know, you test people and so on. Because, um, as you are aware, Kaduma Day is a little different, though, to, to a, 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 a meeting. Um, so they're not everyone that would be up on one another. And when it comes to Kaduma Day. And if you're in a band, you know, it's, it's about it's about jamming on the day, which puts persons very close to one another. So, so it's a little different to compare the two. It's a little different because um, at the at the, the meeting, they had what they had a lot of people that was at a distance. Everybody was up on one another. So I don't want to compare the two. Right. Because come to do that day, we know how could do that day works and what happens. We take into account the alcohol, the drink, you know. And then persons and his music. And when there's music, you joy rate. You you yeah. you're up on the one another. Some religious leaders are questioning what appears to be double standards for cricket fans at the recent T twenty international series at Kensington Oval, while strict COVID-19 protocols are enforced on the faith-based community and society at large. President of the Barbados Evangelical Association, Dr. Nigel Taylor, described it as an affront to health standards that have been established for the church and the wider society. It was very clear to everybody, see, they were not hiding, they were not hiding. Everybody could have seen persons um, massless. Right? Yeah. And it, it, it comes as an affront, really, to the standing practices that would have been established. Because I did not hear of any modification of the rules. I, I did not hear of any modification of the protocols. Bishop of the Barbados-based Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, Selwyn Brafwit, also called for a review of the protocols for churches. If we that the relaxation in other places, but I guess we have to look at the look at Tina if it's if it's also there that there can be that, that there can be a review of looking towards the relaxation but of course we still have to maintain Chairman of the Barbados Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Cicely Atil Horsford, frowned on the non wearing of face masks at cricket matches but did not agree that the protocols should be relaxed at this time. Personally, um, would hold the restrictions until I see the outcome of what the cricket did mm -hmm. and so on. Because I'm afraid that they tried and open up to some of these things and many of us are not doing the right thing. 
do right now is to hold the phone until um, a week or two. The Muslim community has also expressed concerns about the situation. Harry's secretary of the Muslim Association of Barbados, Suleiman Bobulia. For those in the faith based community, if one looks at that and wonders what's happening with the regulations as it relates to, to, to places of worship and so on, and as I said, the ideal situation for, for us uh, as Muslims is that we be able to stand and pray next to each other um, in congregation. Um, so, you know, you look at these other things that are happening and people do ask questions, you know, why is it good for them but not good for us? Uh, so these are these are conversations that we need to continue to have going forward. And But we want to also be playing our role in making sure that we are not spreaders of, of, of the virus. In other news, the National Union of Public Workers has a new General Secretary. Richard Green, the union's former Deputy General Secretary, was chosen for the post following a meeting of the National Council at the union's Dalkey for St. Michael headquarters. He defeated a veteran trade unionist, Wayne Waldron, for the position. Green and Waldron were the only two who applied to fill the post. Waldron had been acting in the position since Delcia Burke retired at the end of 2020. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and Keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news now, the opposition in Guyana has taken government to task for what it says is its failure to put measures in place for the holding of local government elections. More from News Source, Guyana. Opposition Member of Parliament Ganesh Mahipal accused the government today of not setting aside funds in this year's budget for local elections, although the elections are constitutionally due. Comrade Speaker, local government election is overdue. It is a constitutional requirement. Was there any mention of local government elections in this budget presentation? To my re recollection, the answer is a resounding no. This regime is not focused on upholding and ensuring the holding of local government elections. And the only reason is because they are afraid of the APNU-AFC coalition. According to Mr. Mahi Paul, the government appears set to further delay the elections. The delay in hosting the elections is putting local government bodies on the threat. What we have is a local government agenda that is in reverse. There is no provision in the budget that the senior minister in the office of the president with responsibilities for finance spent more than who spent more than five hours presenting for strengthening local governance and local government. Absolutely no proper consideration. No money for local government elections. Note, sir, whenever the PPP is in government, they have a strong track record of denying Guyanese their right to local governance. And finally, on the international front, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has condemned what has been described as hateful rhetoric used during mass demonstrations by anti-vaccine truckers and their supporters. I think, obviously, the, the right to free expression, the right to assembly, the right to uh, make your displeasure known in a democracy is extraordinarily important and needs to be heeded and respected. There have been many, many protests over, uh, over the past years that I've seen. 
uh, that I've been uh, uh, part of, that I've uh, watched from a distance on Parliament Hill and elsewhere, where people come together angry about a certain thing, wanting something else to change, that don't see the level of hateful rhetoric, of swastikas, of abuse towards their fellow citizens. There is always a right to protest peacefully that I and others will defend fully as part of this democracy. There is not a right to incite violence, to perform acts of violence, or to spew hatred. And I think anyone who is part of this group who is disgusted by what, uh, what the folks protesting alongside are doing needs to step up and take responsibility, condemn these actions, and look for other ways to express their displeasure. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.